Hey guys, welcome to 420 Fire Loveland. We're blessed to have you. Um, unfortunately, you missed some amazing worship with Steve and the team, but um, we're just going live for the word. So if you're joining, give us a shout. And uh, we're just believing it's going to be fire there, fire here, fire everywhere. So, um, also, we have a Prophecy Dreams and Visions gathering that is going to be on Saturday the 27th at New Freedom Outreach. And I encourage you, um, come and join. There's info on my page. Registration is a, a requirement, um, but... Uh, it, um, if you have problems registering, just message me. Uh, but I hope you'll be there. It'll, it'll be awesome. It's going to be an all day, all day Holy Ghost time. And uh, God's going to be moving. So, um, yeah, good call. So, Holy Ghost, we just honor you tonight. And we thank you for your fire. We just thank you for the fire of your spirit that's with us. And Spirit of God, we just honor you during this time. And you know, this afternoon, just in prayer in the spirit, I heard the Lord say that there's going to be a Holy Ghost explosion tonight. And I saw this fire and um, that it's been already just lit, just a powerful time with Jesus and the Spirit of God igniting fire. And so we're just releasing our faith that this fire comes through this recording and lights you on fire. So between you and God, just say, God, I want the fire. I want to be lit. I want to be transformed and move in all you have for me. And all of us are, are engaged for that as well. So you know what's powerful is that the moment... You and I came into Christ. Did you know that when we were born again, we became completely righteous? I tell you, if you would have told me that in my early or maybe my first half of my walk with Jesus, I would have said, you are on crack. Like you are not even, what are you talking about? I'm righteous. You know, and I was very performance oriented and I would read the word of God and I would listen to teachers that would talk about the drive and the price we need to pay and what we need to do and fasting and praying and, and all those things. And all those things are great, but don't put the cart before the horse. It's vital. And, you know, I was in a, I was in a Bible college in 2008 and I read a book that just flipped my world upside down. And it was called The Atonement by Derek Prince. Um, it's also called Bought with Blood. There, that's, that's the other name of it. But in that book, Derek Prince talks about the nine exchanges of the cross. And, you know, it was our sin for his righteousness our punishment for his forgiveness, our sickness for his health, eternal damnation for eternal life and a whole new life with a whole new nature. And, you know, poverty for prosperity, spirit, soul, and body, all these things that happen. But the thing is, is that in Christ, it's past tense. And when Jesus said three words, it is finished, it was done. And the moment we step into Christ, we step into that reality. And, and it wrecked me. I actually got furious. I, I said, are you kidding? Like, I, I, you know, because what a lot of us are taught is to have one foot in the law, in the old covenant, and one foot in grace in the new covenant, and you can't have a foot in both covenants. And when you try to have a foot in both covenants, you automatically get old covenant because you're dependent on your works and your performance 
to be righteous rather than his finished work. And so um, I, I encourage you, if you haven't read that book, read it. And the other book that I always promo is Destined to Reign, R-E-I-G-N by Joseph Prince. The two princes, Derek Prince and Joseph Prince. And it's fire. They will mark you, transform you by the renewing of your mind. You'll get really mad and then really glad, okay? Because the gospel is that good. He did it all. And so um, we're going to read Romans 6 and, uh, and just, just lay a foundation. But what God's going to do is he's going to release a baptism of fire in this house, in your house, tonight, that's transforming. Because we're already righteous, we're already new. God just wants to grace us and enable us to walk it out. And I tell you, um, life gets really fun when we know who we are and we act like who we are. Wow, Jesus. And he gets all the glory. So Romans chapter 6, here's Paul speaking. He says, so what do we do then? Do we persist in sin so that God's kindness and grace will increase? What a terrible thought. We have died to sin once and for all. As a dead man passes away from this life, so how could we live under sin's rule a moment longer? Now, when he's talking about dying to sin, he's not talking about dying to the action of sin. It's actually a noun, meaning that if we died to the person of sin, to the nature of sin, why continue in the action of sin? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when Adam and Eve fell, the Bible says that, you know, man died spiritually. And they have a fallen nature. And so it just goes down, down the generation after generation. We're born with a sinful nature. That's why, you know, those little kids want to steal the cookie, right? They just have this bent. We're born with a sinful nature. And what happens is what Christ did when he died, we died with him. We were buried with him and we rose with him, whole new creatures. And what, when we receive Jesus, we enter into his death, burial, and resurrection. That's why Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Christ, righteousness, a new nature. Okay, so when he talks about the noun of sin dying, he's like, he said, sin died once and for all. It's dead. In other words, my old nature, that sinful nature I was born with, was put to death the moment I came into Christ. And I became a whole new creature with a whole new nature. So whether I believe it or not, if I've been born again, I am as righteous as Jesus. That used to flip my whip. That used to bother me. I would hear certain teachers and ones teaching this, and I would be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You guys are in compromise. You're just making an excuse to sin, right? And, and, and it's actually the exact opposite. Because when we understand who we are, sin becomes counter nature. It's, that's why looking at porn and, 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 and cussing and, and anger, and all, it just feels off. That's why you, you, you just, it's like, eh, oh, I, I shouldn't have done that. The conviction just falls. And, and, and God's saying, look, you're righteous. 
He's not saying you better change yourself and get righteous. He's saying you are righteous. That's why that's not right. It's actually good. You're convicted. Okay, but there's a fire. There's a fire that God's releasing tonight that's going to burn away residue of that old man and enable you and I to walk in greater new creation reality. Greater reality of who you are as a son, as a daughter of God. Because the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Because as he is, so are you in this world. We've been born again. We're not of this world. And so he goes on and he says, or have you forgotten that all of us who were immersed into union with Jesus, the anointed one, were immersed into union with his death? Baptism is an outward picture of that. Under, buried, dead, up, resurrected, new life. Sharing in his death by our baptism means we were co-crucified and entombed with him so that when the Father's glory raised Christ from the dead, we were also raised with him. Wow. Wow co-crucified, co-buried, co-raised with him. That's you, that's me, new nature. Believe it or not, it's who you are. But as our, as our mind is, is, is renewed, that's what the fire is going to do. That's why the baptism of fire is going to pour out to transform us by the renewing of our mind, burning away old ways of thinking, burning away stinking thinking, burning away excuses and lies. What if the struggle was just a lie? Mm -hmm. That's what I found in my life. Man, I remember I used to struggle with lust, like so bad, like it was bad. Bad. It would torment me when I was I was young. I was like 17, 18, 19, after I got radically saved and filled. But it would torment me. I couldn't go somewhere without undressing a woman in my mind. And it tormented me. And I tell you, um, I would fast and pray. I would pray in tongues for hours and hours, you know, which is all good but don't put the cart before the horse. Because in my mind, I'm thinking linear. I'm trying to get from point A to point B. I didn't realize that I was already at point B in Christ, that I am righteous. And the lie was that I'm a luster, that, you know, sexual... Perversion will meet my needs. That was the lie. And it was just adopted young. Just, you know, I grew up and got, got entrenched in all that. Sex, party, and everything. And so that was where it was like, ooh, this is where it's at. But this lie got embedded in my soul. So we are three-part beings. Okay, so when you're born again, your spirit man becomes born again. It's so what Jesus, he said, you know, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Praise God, we can see the kingdom of heaven. We've been born again, we're new, you know. And as we're born again, just completely new and, and righteous. And, 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 and so, so we're born again, and I was born again. But why this torment? Why these lies? So the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23, Paul is praying that you would be sanctified completely, spirit, soul, and body. And what that means is that we're three-part beings. So we are a spirit. Everybody say, I am a spirit. I am a spirit. 
I have a soul. I have a soul. I live in a body. I live in a body. Okay. So your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's neutral. Okay. That's like neutral ground. Whoever's in charge takes over. And before Christ, you were a sinful nature that just, you know, your mind, will, and emotions walked in that. And then when we're influenced by the world, by other people that aren't healthy, by, by, by TV and movies that aren't good, you know, you just, it, it affects your mind, will, and emotions, regardless of your spirit man's status. So you get born again. There's this new birth that happens, amazing, you know, new creation reality. You're, you're born again. You're saved. You're forgiven. You feel new on the inside. And, and some things, like, just automatically break off. And you, you have this newness inside of you, but you still have a soul that's been under the, the influence and life of an old nature, of the sinful nature. And so I remember after I got radically saved, I was, I was in, uh, in, in the county jail. I was 15 years old. It was miraculous. Like God saved my life. I was convinced that I was not going to live past the age of 19. I already just settled that in my spirit. I was facing eight years in prison, charged as an adult. I was 15 years old. But I had these Christians just loving on me. In the midst of my job, they just loved me. Sending me letters, my mom every time, she's speaking in tongues and praying for me. And then she said, there's this chaplain, you need to meet her. I said, no, nah, mom, I'm good. I'm cool, you know. I'm with the homies. That don't even call me, you know? And, and, and finally, like about two, two months later, I'm like, I'm broke. I'm like, where are my homies? <laughs> you know where? <laughs> and then the police told my closest one that I snitched on him. And I'm so glad they did that because it just cut me off. People are thinking I'm a snitch. I don't even know what he did. <laughs> But, I, but, but but they're just trying to separate everybody, you know. And so I'm at this lowest place in my life, and I, I'm, I talk about the reckless love of God. I'm being pursued by Jesus, and this chaplain comes up, and and she she's she's just glowing with the love of God. If any of y'all know Donna Roth, many have heard of her, and she had a forte of baptizing people in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, all kinds of inmates speaking in tongues. Every time they met Donna, they get saved and start speaking in tongues. And so she shares with me the gospel and she flips out these words of knowledge about my life, like reads my mail to the core. Presence of God fills this room. She said, Kavika, you need to get your life right with God. I'm looking down at my life. I'm, I'm just like, man, like I feel the conviction not condemnation, this conviction. Condemnation says you're a loser, you're a failure, you suck. That's Satan's voice. It's never Jesus. Jesus says, listen, daughter, listen, son, you're so much greater than that. I have a calling on your life. I have a destiny for your life. What if we talk to each other like that would be a little better, right? I mean, man, he's hey. like, come up, come up higher. You know, and, I, and I'm feeling this conviction, seeing all the people that I've hurt, and, and I'm like, God, you know, I, I, I am done with that old life. Now, I've been saved probably like 35 times already. I go to the altar and get saved, and then on Monday, I was out partying and sex and all, just, just being a fool, because I wasn't baptized in the Holy Ghost. I wasn't lit. I didn't lay it all down. But I'm at the end of myself and things are tipping. And I looked at Donna. I said, Donna, I need Jesus. I am done. I am done. I'm at the end of my rope. I'm done. And, and, and she, she just smiled. She, she led me in a prayer. I said, Jesus, I believe you died for me. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I welcome you into my life. 
Teach me how to live a whole new life. I tell you, I like to freak people out. I say, you know what? I was facing eight years in prison. And I remember like it was yesterday, this heavy cloud lifted off of my shoulders. Kavika, you're a failure. You're a loser. You're never going to amount to nothing. It just lifted. And I felt these floods of forgiveness, mercy, grace, love, just flooding my soul. And I tell people, I said, listen, I was locked up facing eight years in prison. And I've never felt freer in my life than that day. And then Donna, she just had to, she had to go there. <laughs> she had to go there. She said, now we need to get you filled with the Spirit. Jesus! And I tell you, I said, I want it. I said, she said, have you ever spoken tongues? I said, no, but my mom, my mom spoke in tongues all my life growing up. Thought it was weird, but I knew she loved me. And man, I saw the power resting on my mom. Saw the power resting on these ladies. She'd be praying with miracles and signs and wonders. I've been slain in the spirit. I've been around these presence of God people and it, it was preparing my heart. I said, I want it. And she, she laid hands on me and I heard this language in my head. Shatarama, shatarama. And, and, I'm, and I'm thinking like, oh man, you're just making that up, Kavika. Y'all, y'all ever felt that? Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, how the carnal mind does. And I'm just like, I'm just making it up. Don't let that out. It's going to be deception, bud. Don't do it. You sound like your mom. You know? This is all internal battle. And so I'm, you know, I, I don't let it out, but I go back to my jail cell. After Donna tells me, she said, I believe in two or three days you're going to get your tongues. So I go back in my jail cell. So I keep hearing that. I said, man, that must be God. I just need to open my mouth. And I just open my mouth. Shut that mouth, shut that mouth. I tell you guys, the glory of God, like, like dropped in my jail, son. I just began weeping. I began weeping and praying in tongues. And I could not stop. And I began praying for my brother. I actually saw my brother in a vision, drugged out. And I was weeping for him. And I tell you, God lit me on fire. I say that for two reasons, because his fire is here tonight to burn away the residue of the old man. But I also say that to say I got born again. I became a new creature, but my mouth was not born again. My soul had a lot of residue from the old man. I was like, F this, F that, and F your mom. Like, every five seconds, it was bad. And uh, it took time to renew my mind, right? About a month later, I got in this fight. Because I was trying to defend this other kid that was being picked on by this other kid. I got in this fight, and we do. We just go heads, and we're just fighting. And uh, you know, they, they come and they get you, they take you down to the brig, throw you in this room, and I just start weeping. And I'm like, God, I'm so sorry. And as I begin to understand Romans six, many years later, unfortunately. I wish I was discipled in the true gospel of grace. Because, man, I tell you, condemnation, unworthiness, self-righteousness, striving to be loved by God for so many years when I didn't know who I was. If I had just known who I was, if, 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 if the cart wasn't put before the horse, I, I, believe, I, I believe righteousness would have become a natural fruit a lot quicker. And, you know, but I tell you, as I begin to get this message, God brought me back to that time when I got in that fight. Brought me back to when I had all the language, all the, all the stuff, and he spoke to me. He said, son, you are no more righteous now 
than right when you got in that fight and that county jail. Because I am your righteousness, not your performance. And it shattered condemnation, shattered self-righteousness. And what happens is when that's shattered, the conviction of God can fall and say, listen, that's not you. You're new, you're righteous, you are love because God is love and you're his kid. And then, you know, you begin to live on the other side of the cross after the finished work. And you begin to, to, to when, when the cart is behind the horse, you, you begin to, to expect to live righteously because it's who you are. Am I making sense? I was no more righteous now. I am no more righteous now. Even though I act a lot more righteous now. Trust me, I have attitudes. I do. I have attitudes. I have areas that I struggle in that God's pruning and refining from glory to glory. You know, some people can see you under the anointing all the time and that's all they see you. And don't get it twisted. But listen, I'm no more righteous than you. You're no more righteous than me. Because Christ is our righteousness and your new nature is 100% righteous. And we're all being transformed from glory to glory by the renewing of our mind. As we behold him, as we know him, as he revelates with us in the Holy Ghost, okay? And so, Paul goes on and he says, for since we are permanently grafted into him to experience a death like his, then we are permanently grafted into him to experience a resurrection like his and the new life that it imparts. So, three-part being, you are a spirit, You've been born again like I was born again. We've all been born again. Amen. Amen. You are righteous. Amen. You are a new creature. You are 100% accepted, approved, and loved by God. God knows you by your nature, not by your performance. It's vital you get this. This is the rest that it talks about in Hebrews. Father God splash Leanne with energy. She's been up since 3 a.m. Oh, rabo shekele me singa la makande. Oh, bo rabo renda la basono lo bokinde. Could it be any clearer that our former identity is now and forever deprived of its power? For we were co-crucified with him to dismantle the stronghold of sin within us so that we would not continue to live one moment longer submitted to sin's power. So, you know, when I used to struggle with that lust so strong and it was a lie embedded in my soul, God showed me the lie. I said, oh my gosh, there's a lie here. I believe that this is going to meet the needs and longings of my heart. And so what do you do when you see a lie? You renounce it. And I, I just repent. I said, God, I repent. I renounce this lie. And, 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 and then I said, Jesus, and, and Lord, I forgive everyone involved, anyone who didn't meet my needs. And, and then I said, Jesus, what do you want to say to replace this lie? And his fire came. Explosion. He said, you're my son. You're pure. You have a pure heart. You're whole. You don't need a woman to meet your needs. My love meets your needs. And then as that 
begin to renew my mind and transform me, it was like a monkey off my back. It was like seeing the dignity of who I am and the beauty of who others are with no need. Because in Christ, you and I are complete. That's reality. But guys, we're all being transformed. What's the lie you're believing? What's the struggle? Is it anger? Is it criticalness? You know, is it, is it inferiority, rejection? You know, just, just welcome him to burn it. Welcome him to torch it. You know, but, but know that in your journey, you are righteous and stop feeding that condemnation devil of oppression, shake it off. You know, the, the biggest uh, proof that you know that you are righteous because of Christ and not your works is right when you screw up, you can confidently with your head held high Say, Jesus, I thank you that I am the righteousness of God. And I know I, I did something stupid, but my mind is being renewed. Now, I'm not going to tolerate condemnation. I'm not going to give it my lunch. Because if you tolerate condemnation, you're saying that your works are greater than the finished work of the cross. And you say, Lord, I welcome you. Convict me. Transform me. And when you catch this radical, finished work, grace for your life, you begin to love others and their struggle. And, and it, it just turns up. Because it's not your works that saved you. It's his. We can boast in nothing but the blood of Jesus. Galatians 6, 14. That's it. That's it. Jesus. Corre borrande. All right, so we're new. Co-crucified, co-buried, co-raised with Christ. Now, there was another man who was raised from the dead in the Bible. His name is Lazarus. And I'm going to parallel Lazarus with us because we've been in the grave with Jesus and we've been raised with Jesus. We are new with a whole new life now. So in John chapter 11, verse 38, it says, Then Jesus, with intense emotions, came to the tomb, a cave with a stone placed over its entrance. Jesus told them, roll away the stone. Then Martha said, but Lord, it's been four days since he died. By now his body is already decomposing. Jesus looked at her and said, didn't I tell you? If you believe in me, you will see God unveil his power. Didn't I tell you that if you believe in me, You'll become a son, a daughter of God. Didn't I tell you that you'd be a whole new creature and old things would pass away? What old things? Your old nature, the old drive you were born with, gone, croaked, adios amigo, dead. No moss. You're new. Bueno, muy bien, nuevo, I'm just saying, all right? But Jesus looked at her and said, I already read that. So they rolled away the heavy stone. Jesus gazed into heaven and said, Father, thank you that you have heard my prayer. For you listen to every word I speak. Because God's word is powerful. And God's word says that Nera has been crucified with Christ. 
Her old nature no longer lives, but a Christ-like nature now lives within her. Leanne no longer lives. That old nature is dead. Adrian's resurrected with a Christ-like nature. And the life we now live, Elma, is in faith in Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. We live resurrected lives. Then in front, whoa, and then, then with a loud voice. Oh, Rabbasana, he said, now so that those who stand here with me will believe that you have sent me to the earth as your messenger. I will use the power you have given me. Then with a loud voice, Jesus shouted with authority, Lazarus, Nira, Leanne, come forth. A lot of Christians have been resurrected, but they're still in the tomb. They're still looking at their self-righteous works to come out. But it's done. He did it. I was in the tomb for years. You know, in the whole of condemnation, shame, fear, control, self-righteousness. I didn't know what had been done. But he said, come forth. Then in front of everyone, Lazarus, who had died for days earlier, four days earlier, slowly hobbled out. He still had grave clothes, tightly wrapped around his hands and feet and covering his face. Jesus said to them, unwrap him and let him loose. So we come out of that grave, co-crucified, co-buried, co-raised. Well, we have some residue. We got some old wrapping paper. We got some residue of the old man, of the world, of, of the enemy. And Jesus said, unwrap him. Unwrap her. She's new. He's new. And that, my friends, is the transformation by the renewing of our mind. We're getting unwrapped, renewed into true identity. That's reality. you got to understand this. There's a lot of deliverance happening, demon chasing happening, yelling and screaming when all it is is a, it, it's the old garment. Put people on a treadmill of performance rather than understand, look, this is who you are. Go chasing demons all day long. You don't, you don't get them established in reality, he was going right back. Find another lie. Establish people in sonship. True identity is deliverance, really, yeah. But it's not the focus. It's not every day, all day. Jesus is every day, all day. It can, it can, be, a, it can be a distraction that keeps you from this. This is deliverance. Unwrap him and let him loose. Ephesians chapter 4, y'all. You're ready for the fire, man, because it's about to come. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 24. Paul speaking. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Put it off, it's dead. Put it off, renew your mind. Put it off, take the grave clothes off. And put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Now, what he's talking about is the soul, your mind, will, and emotions. 
Because you can be born again, but you can wear a bunch of old, dead, sinful nature clothing. You can, you can look at porn. You can go and do this, go and do that, act a fool. Do all, you can do all that. You're, you're, but you're manifesting a false identity. It's not even you. That's why it doesn't feel right. So it opens the door to the enemy. We don't have time for that. But when we align with our spirit man, our true identity, which should be natural, righteous, accepted, loved, the fruit of the spirit, all those things, you know, we read that often about the spirit man, the fruit of the spirit with a capital S. But I want to suggest that it's a small S. Walk in the spirit. Walk in your new nature. What's the fruit of your new nature? Love. It's who you are. Joy. Peace. Long-suffering. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness. It's all the, it's all the Christ-like realities. The fruit of the Spirit is the character of Jesus. That's who we are. The fire of God is burning away all the opposite. Is this making sense? So John was baptizing people in the River Jordan, the cousin of Jesus, right before Jesus made himself known. And John, he said, there is one coming after me whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to loose. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. What does fire do? It consumes. It burns away. And he talked about burning away the dross. So I want to just give a few definitions of fire biblically before we welcome the fire to baptize us and, and that Holy Ghost explosion takes place because the fire has already been loose. The fire is already burning all over here, but we're just going to partner with it even more. Tick, 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 boom. Tick, 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 boom. Ba-boom. Song of Solomon 8, verse 6 and 7. It says, For love is as strong as death, its jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like blazing fire. Everybody say, The fire of love. The fire of love. It burns like blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Many waters cannot quench love. He will baptize you and immerse you in the Holy Spirit and fire. Many waters cannot quench the fire of love. God is love. God is a consuming fire. Many waters cannot quench this fire of love. Do you remember when, when Jesus was on the cross and, and, and they were nailing him? And the enemy was trying to quench this fire, quench this love. And, and Jesus, he said, oh, but this fire can't be quenched. And he said, Father, as they're nailing him, nailing him. Talk about radical surrender. And God wants us in that same boat, in that same realm. Radical surrender, he's being nailed. And, 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 and rather than fall into self-preservation and pity and, 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 and call a thousand angels, he, he said, Father, 
God, Father, forgive them. Father, they don't even know what they're doing. God, forgive them. Forgive them, God. And he's, and he's praying for the very ones murdering him. And then he says, as I have done, as I have loved you, go do likewise. <sighs> Stephen ends up doing it. Stephen. He's being stoned. And he's caught up in a vision. He sees Jesus. He's caught up. He's not even looking at them. He's caught and love just invades. That's fire. That's fire. That's how I want to learn to love Sarah, right? Adrian, Ruth. That's how we want to learn to love our enemy, to love ourselves. It's upside down doesn't make sense. No other religion, no other religion goes there. It's always for something of self. Jesus said, if you seek to save your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you'll find it. How do we do that? Romans 6. Receive it, believe it, eat it, drink it, the blood, the body, feast. So that's the fire of love, you guys. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. There's a Holy Ghost explosion of transformations, and I didn't even know what God was going to do. And then I, 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 I was up just posted listening and and then he said, this is what I want to do. I said, okay, 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 daddy, let's do it. Let's do it. Come on. So listen, the next fire is the fire of purity. Everybody say purity. Purity. In Malachi 3, verse 3, it says, he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold, and silver. A refining fire refines, it purifies. What happens is there's gold and then, and then it's put over the fire in a pot, in a, in a kettle, and, and, and the fire just begins to burn, 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 burn. And then what happens is the impurities just float to the surface. When you're in a refining season, you, you end up feeling like you're not saved. You end up feeling like you lost it or, you, or something happened or you backslid, but that's not true. And you got to know Romans 6. Romans 6 and Colossians 2 has to be foundation, the lens for all we do and see, guys, for all the rest of the word. It has to be or else you'll get in a performance. If this is new for you, get those books. Get princed. Atonement, Derek Prince. Destined to Rain, Joseph Prince. Amber Twig. Amber's loaded. Good stuff. And, you know, for foundational lens. So the fire of purity. So the fire that we're baptized with is a fire of love, and it's a fire of purity. So God, what does he do? He's burning away the grave clothes. He's burning away the stinking thinking, the lies. You are righteous. He's just burning you and lighting you on fire so you act like it. That's all. So you, Because you are like him. It's like, I like to say, it's like you are a dog, but you're meowing like a cat. Wouldn't that be weird if Gunner down there came up and started meowing? Started like rolling around chasing a ball on a string? Wouldn't that be weird, Gunner? We have a dog here with us, but it'd just be wrong. But that's how God, he sees us when we walk out sin, right? He's like, dude, like, stop, buddy. You know? 
That's why as we behold him as in a mirror and we see ourselves be like a dog looking at a dog, hearing a dog, learn to bark like a dog, and, and then learning to bark and through exercise and practice, righteousness and true identity becomes normal. That's all it is. All right. The next fire, everybody say the fire. The fire. Of God's written and spoken word. Of God's written and spoken word. Jeremiah 20, verse 9. It said, his word is in my heart like a fire. A fire shut up in my bones. I'm weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. God's written word and his rhema word is a fire. As I've been filling the fire tonight. Because his word for tonight is fire. Steve released the fire. The fire has just been moving all over this night. And the fire is here. It's the word. But when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, you're baptized in the fire of love, the fire of purity, and the fire of his written and prophetic spoken word. Okay? And then lastly, the fire of the gifts of the Spirit. And really, Paul, he said, fan into flame the gifts of God. Okay? So the fire of God and the Spirit, it, 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 it burns away things that are counter God character. And it fans into flame things that are True God character, love, fruits of the Spirit, and true God power, gifts of the Spirit. So this baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire is loaded. It is freaking loaded. And that's why there are 120 of them in the upper room. They're like, Jesus said, wait for this flame. Wait for this one. This promise because when he comes we're going to be endued with power from on high when the spirit comes upon us we're going to receive power dunamis power fire upon our lives we're going to be transformed so wait and so they're tarrying oh rabba shekele mekende Oh, rambo rambo rendere bebebe konda they're waiting for this fire they're waiting for this flame. And then the Bible says that the, the Holy Spirit came like a mighty rushing wind. And there were tongues of fire that rested upon each of their head. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Just like me in that county jail. I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I got lit. And then ever since that time, 2,000 years ago, we have access to get lit. To burn more and more and more and more. And what Paul exhorts us in Ephesians 5 verse 18. He said, you want to get drunk? You don't need wine. He said, don't get drunk on wine. We're in his excess. But be continually. Everybody say continually. Continually. Filled. With the, with the Holy Ghost. All right? And that's where the fire baptism is a continual exhortation of God and His Word. And so, um, let's all stand up. Corre borrande de 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 linda la ba 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 sanda. Whether you're here in person or with us live, the fire is accessible. The fire of love, that many waters cannot quench, the fire of purity, the fire of the spoken and written word of God, the fire of the gifts of the Spirit. The fire of God is accessible. And God prophesied to me this afternoon that there's a Holy Ghost 
explosion and I saw fire ignite. So what God is doing is he's bringing transformation because every single one of you here, and if you haven't received that finished work, hopefully you prayed with me when I shared how I received it. So I'm going to trust that every single one of you are new creatures now, and you've been co-crucified, co-buried, and co-raised from the dead with Jesus. And now God is on assignment to burn away the grave clothes. That's why John said, you know, I baptize you with water and repentance. But there is one coming after me whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And what he's doing tonight is he's burning away lies. And I don't care if you've, if you've done this 25 times or this is new. You partner with him and you're not going to leave the same. I promise you that. And so repeat after me. Jesus, Jesus I, break agreement I break agreement with fear, with, fear, with walls I've built, with, walls I've built, with pride, with pride self-protection. Self -protection. Leave now. Leave now. Jesus, come and hold my hand. Jesus, come and hold my hand. I need you now. I need, you now. I need your fire. I need your fire. And just say, Jesus. Jesus. What lie? What lie? Have I believed about myself? Have I believed about myself? That's hindered me. That's hindered me. Wave when you got it. All right. Just say, Jesus. Jesus. I forgive everyone involved with this lie. I forgive everyone involved with this lie. I don't agree with them. I don't agree with them. I set a boundary with them. I set a boundary with them. But I release them to you. But I release them to you. I'm not their punisher. I'm not their punisher. And by your grace. I renounce this lie. I renounce this lie. And I declare it broken off. And I declare it broken off. Nailed to the cross. Nailed to the cross. Powerless. Powerless. Now just say Jesus. Jesus. Here I am. Here I am. You see my pain. You see my pain. You see the hurt. What do you want to say to me right here? What's happening? It's his fire. Wave at me if you heard him. It's his fire. I saw him touch you deep, Nero. This is for you tonight. It really is. It's relieving you. You've been working so hard, girl. Everybody say, Jesus. Jesus. I want more fire. What's the next lie you want to deal with? Wave when you got it. Everybody say, Jesus. Jesus. I forgive everyone involved with this lie. I don't agree with them. I set a boundary. I'm not their punisher. I release them to you. And by your grace, because I'm a new creature, I break agreement with this lie. I declare it dead at the cross. Just say, Jesus, you see the hurt and the pain. What do you want to say to me? Who do you say I am?
Wave at me if you heard him. Jesus. All right, last one, but these are keys you can use as Jesus leads you. You know that Jesus is leading this whole night. He even told me to do this three times because this fire is here to burn away. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, so, so just, whoa. Because what's happening right now is the bomb is just exploding. It's detonating old nature lies and releasing true identity. Whoa. So repeat after me, Jesus. I want more fire. I want more fire. What's the next lie? What's the next lie? Hang up. Hang up. Or stronghold. Or stronghold. You want to deal with. You want to deal with. I see God like bringing deliverance and freedom from like stuff that's just been a hang up. Like a hangnail you haven't been able to shake. And it's harassed you. Wave when you got your lie. Just say, Jesus. Jesus. I forgive everyone involved with this lie. I everyone involved with this lie. Especially, myself Especially myself and you. And you. I'm, sorry for judging you. I'm sorry for judging you. I don't agree with the people. I, I set a boundary. I release them. But I'm not the punisher. By your grace, I renounce and shatter this lie, and I nail these grave clothes to the cross. I declare it dead and buried. So just say, Jesus, who am I to you? This is for one person, but we're going to deal with it corporately, and maybe this is for someone that's live too, but we're going to deal with generational curse of perfectionism. And um, self-righteous striving and the standard that puts you on the treadmill and um, causes you just to wear yourself out and God's like you started at the finish line you're good so repeat after me to say Jesus, Jesus. I, confess to you I confess to you the sin and the curse, the sin and the curse of my ancestors, of my, ancestors my, parents and myself, my parents and myself of perfectionism, of perfectionism every vow to be perfect, every vow to be the best, every vow to do all that I can to be better than others because of past rejection. Every self-righteous amount of thinking and every spirit of accusation and judgment towards others. And every spirit of accusation and judgment towards others. Because of the false idea that I have attained righteousness. Because of the 
false idea that I attained righteousness. I forgive my ancestors and parents. I forgive my ancestors and parents. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. And, because blood, and because of your blood and your broken body, I renounce these sins and curses. I declare them dead and buried at the cross. Broken, shut down, and powerless. And just say, Jesus, here I am. Who do you say I am to replace these curses? Now, if this message is like hitting home in your heart, and this is like the voice of God just setting you free from shackles and chains, I exhort you, read the book Atonement by Derek Prince, Destined to Reign, R-E-I-G-N, by Joseph Prince. Feed your spirit, because transformation your next step of dealing with those grave clothes is renewing your mind. But I tell you, you've got to protect the gospel of grace and the finished work. Amber Twig, Dan Moeller, Todd White, Georgian and Winnie Banov, Andrew Walmack, all like solid grace teachers. Not grace that gives a license to sin. It's grace that empowers true identity and righteousness. It is freeing and you get your eyes off yourself. And so Father, I thank you for the breakthrough, explosion, detonation of your Holy Ghost tonight that's baptized us in fire. And I pray for each of these, I pray for myself, God, as we steward the flame. As we steward the flame, that each one's mind would be renewed. And I want to give a shout out for Sarah and I real quick. I'm just getting the word out. And the also great news that Steve Stumbo is being ordained as our associate. And he's going to hold down the fort here in Loveland while Sarah and I are out of town making West Virginia impact. We're going to be back and forth. But this pub is going to be alive and on fire. So don't get it twisted. And um, it's going to be awesome. But Sarah and I are believing for 30 partners who will commit long term to $100 a month for West Virginia impact. And this will help us in breaking ground in the ministry, purchasing a property there, getting it um, accessible, uh, construction, different things. And then a little, a little icing on the cake for those partners is um, we want to lean in and catch the wind of the Holy Spirit prophetically. And we're going to make you an 8 by 10 inch plaque personalized with some prophetic poetry for encouragement for your life uh, just to be wind to your sailing for the days ahead, just as a simple way to say thank you. And we are so grateful for everyone who's, who's sewn into us and just had our back and it's not taken lightly. And so but this is a fun little kingdom hustle we're doing. And so if you feel the wind, partner with us Go to our text to give, 970-615-1441. Text give to that uh, phone number, and then a portal will pop back, and you can just hit that West Virginia Impact link and, uh, and just, man, have our back. But just be obedient to Jesus, because he's our, he's our provider. But man, we love y'all. Stay lit. Stay drunk in the Holy Ghost. And then come and join us Saturday the 27th at New Freedom Outreach in Birthed all day. 
8.30 to 8.30 for a prophetic dreams and visions, equipping, training, and launching. It's a gathering all northern Colorado. It's going to be fire. It'll mess you up, I promise. So go to my page and look for that. Love y'all. Go Jesus.